And Daram Yeh say, whenever I leave the house, and on whatever thing my eyes fall on, Sabr. Allah Ta'ala say, Allah Ta'ala say, Allah Ta'ala say, School governing body of South Coast Madrasa. Okay, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Awuzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Nahmatu wa nasalli ala rasulil karim. A very warm and generous welcome to all our guests here tonight. I think on a cold night like this, to brave your, to brave the weather elements and to come out, is a huge uh, sign of interest, is a huge sign of commitment, and is a huge sign of dedication to the cause. You know, we gathered here today at the Apartheid Museum to launch Cage Africa, which is a branch of Cage UK. And you may wonder if you haven't by now Google Cage or understood what Cage stands for. By the if, by the time we finish tonight, you will know what Cage is about. So before I, I start, I just want to share some things with you. The word war on terror, renditions, Guantanamo Bay, arbitrary detention, torture, complicity, covert operations, terrorist policies. These are all synonymous and they all have one thing in common, is they fight human freedom. These are the things that oppress people throughout the world, no matter where they come from. And CAGE is an organization that fights for people's rights. I'm just going to share with you something of CAGE's website in terms of their mission. CAGE is an independent advocacy organization working to empower committed communities impacted by the war on terror. The organization highlights and campaigns against state policies, striving for a world free from oppression and injustice. And if you go to the website www.cageuk.com or www.cageafrica.com, you will get a lot of information on that. But before I call on my first speaker, I just want to share one little statistic with you. There were 775 detainees that were brought to Guantanamo Bay at the start of the war on terror. Right now, as of May 2014, there are still 149 detainees there that hasn't been charged. And I think CAGE does enormous work in trying to help those that don't have a voice outside Guantanamo Bay. So to introduce Yusuf Dokrat, Yusuf is a board member of CAGE Africa. I'll call Yusuf up and he'll share more light on the subject. Thank you. Yes, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I firstly um, uh, extend a uh, my gratitude, the organization's gratitude to our, our guests who've traveled a uh, long, long distance to honor us with their presence. I uh, also wish to extend um, my thanks to you uh, as a community for coming out on, as Ibrahim has said, a very cold evening. Um, and I thought I'd share just a few, few thoughts with you. I have just only five minutes, I'm told. So very briefly, let me start by saying that when an organization is launched, there is generally a sense of excitement, uh, almost a celebratory tone about it. Um, and I wondered whether we'd have that same sense this evening. But of course, when you think of the nature of this organization, uh, it yields the very opposite feeling. Because launching an organization such as Cage Prisoners, Cage Africa, as we know, is testament to the fact that there is something seriously wrong with the world. So it's not a, it's not a moment of joy. Uh, it's a moment of commitment. It's a moment of sober reflection uh, to understand that there is something rotten and that rot is spreading and someone needs to resist. So I thought I'd share two issues with you. The first is the importance of speaking as a form of protest. 
Um, some of you may be familiar with an author from Nigeria, a female author called Shimamande Adichie. She's become very popular in the last uh, year or so, and unsurprisingly. But she speaks about the notion of the single story, the single story that is told by the ruler, uh, the single story that is told by the imperialist nation that seeks to define who you are, that creates the prism from which you understand the world. And we know who the ruling parties of the world are. We know the alliance of evil. We know the hegemony that they exercise over the world. We know the prism, we know the paradigm. And it is vital that people all over the world begin to challenge that prism, begin to challenge that paradigm and that single story that they create because what they do is define who you are. What they do is tell you what to apologize for. What they do is tell you what to believe and what not to believe. And if we, as a society, in the southern tip of Africa, as a continent, and as a world, allow this single story to continue unabated, then we will have to answer not only to our children and to our grandchildren, but on the day of reckoning, we will have to answer as to why we did not change that story. And that brings me to the question of relevance then, because the one question you may be asking is, well, you're on the southern tip of Africa. You're in a country that is known for remarkable freedoms. Uh, there is general peace, political goodwill. What, what are you about? And why are you forming Cage Africa? And it just so happens, and if you have been following the news, you would have seen that the African continent is not immune to the imperialist endeavor. Now, the African continent is not immune to the war of terror against Muslims. The African continent is not immune to the war of terror against those who seek an alternative voice. And you will have noted that the, a group called AFRICOM, which really pursues the interests of the United States of America, is very much a part now of the African continent. They talk of bases, bases being, being started in our neighboring countries. And so very soon, we will be feeling firsthand the practical effects of renditions, the practical effects of black sites. And it is therefore very important that we start early, be alert, understand that we are not in a bubble. We are located within a world in which the United States of America and its allies have completely destroyed the fundamental cause of humanity. And we need to start fighting that. And on this issue of fighting, it is about submission. Because what they seek is for you to submit to their prison. And I just thought, because these things are available these days, I would type in the word prison in an English translation of the Quran before I started. In fact, Brother Firoz was kind enough to point it out to me. And I just want to read to you the translation of the one, one ayah that popped up, and maybe you can see why it's so, so important for us. And this is the ayah 29 in the uh, in a surah called Al-Shu'ara, where the Quran is describing the conversation between Fir'aun, Pharaoh, and Musa salam, Moses. And Pharaoh says to Musa, if thou dost put forward any god other than me, I will certainly put thee in prison. So right from those times, you had forces who through their arrogance sought your submission, and if you did not submit, you would be imprisoned. And how different is a Barack Obama to a Fir'aun. How different is a British government to a Fir'aun? And this is the question that we have to keep asking us. Are we going to submit to them 
Or are we the people who have already submitted to Allah, to truth, to God? Are we going to submit to imperialism? Or are we going to submit to our obligation to be just and to fight for justice? So may I, in conclusion then, say to you that we are really, really grateful that you are here. I pray, inshallah, that our guests will share uh, wonderful words of wisdom which uh, they have in the past, and I hope they will continue to do so. I hope that you will be encouraged to assist the brothers and sisters all over the world, not just in, in Guantanamo, but there are sites all over the world where brothers and sisters are being held, are being tortured, uh, are being dehumanized. May Allah grant them success, may grant this organization success, and Jazakallah khair. Thank you. Amin. Jazakallah, Yusuf. You know, those 775 combatants, a lot of them have been released, barring the 149 that are still sitting in Guantanamo. How many have been charged with any crime? And I think that's an exercise for you to do when you go back tonight and you can ask Google that question. And hopefully Wikipedia will give you the answer. But you've got to understand that what CAGE does is extremely, extremely beneficial to very, very large numbers of people. Each of those people that have been detained have families, have extended families, have children. And who looks after them when they have been incarcerated? And I think CAGE fulfills that role. <laughs> Jannah and Wa Naima, Salu Alayhi.